launches the wizard uh, and it will lead us through step by step asking us questions per page so we can get to the end and create a, a 3D cutter path that we can send to the machine. So the first thing it's asking for is a model so I'm going to load a model into the view as you can see. Uh, I should explain at this stage we could tick this option here if it was a very simple uh, 2D part or 2.5D, so if it had straight sided pockets and a straight sided, -sided outer profile, we'd go through a much simplified version of this, uh, of this wizard. But we're going to do full 3D machine here, so we're going to stay with the standard one. We're going to go next. Here it defi says define the cut plane. It wants to know uh, what orientation we want the model in for machining. We want it in this orientation. Uh, we can also define how much of the model to machine by using the slider here or entering values here. Okay, so that's the, the model. Uh, we've got information up here about the model size, which is useful when we're selecting the material size. So we've got the material size selected here uh, and the material type. We're on a, a router here, so we've got the softer materials available to us. Uh, I'm going to go next, and now it's going to load the model in, and it's actually defaulted to fit to material, it's scale it up to fit the material. I want to do it the scale I designed at, so I'm going to put it back to a hundred percent. Okay, and I'm going to go next. Here I define the cutters I'm going to use to machine it. Normally we use a large uh, straight cutter for doing the roughing and a smaller radius cutter for doing the, the finishing. Okay, I'm going to go through with the defaults here, which is maybe what a student would do the first time they, they use the wizard. Um, you will notice that we've got different options available. So on the roofing here, we've got two available, offset and raster. Oft offset is normally used for the, the harder materials, raster is a, uh, a little quicker. Uh, and when we come into finishing, we've got a number of finishing strategies available. These are all using terminology that we would find on industrial cam packages. Uh, now again, I'm new to the application, let's say, um, so I don't know which to, to pick, so the easiest thing is to stay with the defaults, uh, go through and click compute and we will start to calculate the cutter pass, so these large step downs are the roofing passes, the lines that are closer together are the finishing passes, uh, it doesn't tell us too much about what the final uh, machine component is going to look like, so if we click the simulate button, we can get a full 3D simulation of the manufacture process, so the, the roofing and now the finishing. And every mark that we see on here, every machining cusp, we will see on the actual final component. So by going back and experimenting with different machining strategies, we can see if we can improve the surface finish. So here I'm not very happy with these marks down the, down the side. So I can go back and try one of the other machining strategies, so I might interested to find out what spiral machining achieves. So I go next, compute. We've now got a spiral cutter path coming out from the center. And again, we can click on the simulation and see what the net effect of my decisions were. Now you can see it'll do it. We've, but we've, again, we've got different types of uh, machining marks left here, which are undesirable. Uh, so you know, spinal machining is great for circular objects, not so good for an object like this. I'm going to go back, uh, and I know for this particular object, or type of object, doing a raster at 45 degrees is quite favourable. So we've now got raster machining, straight line machining, but at 45 degrees to the X and Y axis. And again, we can click simulate. And by using this strategy, we get quite a good surface finish down both this axis and down this axis. So now I'm getting, I'm quite pleased with the surface finish. What I'm not so pleased with are these areas here over the wheel arches. So, and we normally say do this right at the end. So get the surface finish as good as possible. Uh, and then we have an option called rest finishing cycle. Again, this is an option you'll see in an industrial cam package. Uh, what it means is it tries to remove the rest of the material, the, the material that hasn't already been machined. There's quite a big computation overhead for this, which is why we do it right at the end. So what it's going to do now is scan across the model, 
It's saying here identifying candidate regions for remachining. So it's going to scan across it in the x axis and then the y axis. It's going to try and find areas that haven't been machined. It's now saying now generating toolpath completed. If I just turn off the other machining, you can see we now have some extra machining in these isolated areas. And if we finally run the simulation again, we'll see right at the end. And I will try and slow it down so you can see it. There we've got some machining around the bottom there, and then we've got the extra machining over the wheel arches. Now we've got an extremely good surface finish once we're happy with that we can go next and we can save <coughs> the, um, uh, the file out and go straight to uh, straight to manufacture so if I just save that now it will load it into the main application run the simulation again you can see we've got a cycle time here as well got the full GNM code program up here and again were I connected to a machine I could click the manufacture icon and we can go straight to to manufacture this part. Just go back and have a look at the app. So that's a very simple way to, to, to use the application and do some very complex machining. Um, for more advanced users who want a little bit more control over the, uh, the various strategies, then we have some advanced settings. And here we can actually go into any of the strategies and we can start to define how the cuttings um, occurred so if we're going to do climb milling or conventional milling which would be useful maybe on the harder materials aluminium steel um, we can decide if we're going to go in one direction or bi-directional we can on the spiral milling not only um, we can we we can um, not only just do spiral machining but we can actually say exactly where we want the start point to be and what the inner and outer radius wants to be so we've got a lot of control and again these are controls you would find on an industrial package but they only are available to an advanced user you must be logged on to the main application as an advanced user to access uh, access these strategies so really again even with this simple import wizard there is some progression built in where we can t learn about industrial machining strategies and the intricacies of them by using these advanced options.